Right, I've set up my frame, but remember I set up the end of it. This was the last frame I put to the stage. So I need to now get between here and here. So I'm going to kind of animate backwards. And I get to decide, okay, what things have to happen. I want the mouth to open up quickly. So I'm not going to do any in-between movement between this and the mouth being closed. So because I know that, I can clean this up. And there's just one place it needs to be cleaned up. It's because I'm doing them at low opacity. I just got to trim this right here. Uh, let's see. It's a little tricky, actually. It doesn't need to be perfect. GIF animations are glitchy and they go by fast. But I want to delete that from there. All right. So I'm going to merge these two together. So now that's one asset. And if I need to, you can use your compositing skills. I could use clone stamp if I wanted to to clean that up. The whole point of animation is really understanding what you're doing. Yeah, not worth it with the transparencies. Okay, so now uh, I guess it's worth it. No, it's not worth it. Anyway, what happened was I had two layers that were at 75% opacity, and then I merged them together. When you do that in, in Photopea or Photoshop, it makes that one layer still 75% opaque, but it thinks it's at 100% opacity. It's a little complicated. So that means when I clone stamp, it clone stamps at 100% opacity. So the only way I can match it is to set the clone stamp to 75% opacity, which is weird on normal mode. And we can see if that works, but it would be more like split the difference between so it's still too dark, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. If I fixed it before I merged them, it would be fine, but it doesn't matter. Or, oh, I could do this. I'm a problem solver. I'm going to do the non-destructive clone stamp on a new layer, mark it red. And then on that layer, I'm going to survey from all layers, right? And then I'm going to do it, and then it will match the color and the opacity. I can get rid of that little black line, though it's not the end of the world, because this is going to pass by in the animation in one third of a second. But it's always good to know how you can control these things. All right. I also think because it's a light mouth on a light background, it'd be fun to composite in something else here that um, was more surprising. And I have the idea of instead of just like the inside of a mouth, let's see, there is the Looney Tunes screen. I don't know how to look for it. Let me see. I'll look up title screen. But it's really when it signs off. It's this thing. It'd be fun if I can find that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Without anything. Something similar to it. Something weird. Looks like the inside of the mouth. I'll take it. Bring it into it as an asset. This is my assets folder. And then transform it. Rasterize it. Put it behind my cat. And I'm going to cut it out. So it's only what I want. First, I'm going to cut it out with my ellipse 
Let's see about right here. Draw the ellipse. Use my arrow keys. That should do it. Then duplicate that selection out, erase the object it comes from. Now I'm going to use my polygonal lasso, which allows me to do straight lines, right? Or better yet, I'll do it this way. Use my magic wand, select the empty space, and then duplicate that out from the inside of the mouth. So it's going to open up like that, which is pretty funny. I like that. like it so much, I'm going to merge it all together. But before I do that, let's see, maybe I make this just a little bit more textured by using Dissolve. Nope, don't like it. Never mind. But I can take its opacity down a little bit. Not too much. All right, now I'll merge them together. Ha-ha! Okay, now I gotta work backwards from here. I'm gonna save my asset. Again, this is green, and then my stage is blue. I need to get stuff back to the stage. I spent a lot of time building that up, but that's a big moment. That's right here. Now I've gotta get to that point with my new fish. So, I've animated the fish. So let's go back to the beginning. by recreating my last frame, at least mostly. So my cat's eyes are there and there, I think. We'll have to see. And then my cat's head, where did my cat's head go? Ooh, I might have made that mistake of not duplicating it as an asset, which just means more work for me, but a good object lesson. <laughs> that sometimes you have to recreate stuff. So how can I be smart about it? This is the easiest way. Go back to my stage, which is full resolution. Go to my frame here. That's pretty clear. So I don't have any that's really easy. I just want one without the fish. Come on, Photopi, keep up with me. Oh, that's because I'm too far below. Okay, there we go. Here we go. So I'm going to take this layer. Yep, that's the one. I'm going to copy it all. Do the reverse of what I usually do and bring this back to my assets. So if you ever lose an asset, you want to rebuild it. I'm really kind of shocked that I, I did that, but it happens. Okay, so now I have the cat here. And I'm working towards this position. So I have to clear out the eyes but I can go ahead and use this as my first frame because I'm just going to do this quickly in three frames. Four frames. So I need the eyes to be over here. Where are they? There they are. And so I need to clear them out inside. real pain. So what I'm going to do is select with the magic wand with contiguous the blacks of the eyes. And the whites of the eyes. And all those gradations in between. Let me use my lasso. This is me problem solving in real time.
And then I'm going to use a tool that I really never show in this class because it's, it's close to an AI tool, but it's much older than that. It's called Content Aware. But what it should do is fill in that I because if I just delete, you know, it's missing a lot. So if I say edit fill and then under fill, if I use content aware, it's been around so long, it's in photo P as well as Photoshop. I can fill in and it will basically kind of clone stamp from what's around it to get me something similar to those eyes. And it didn't do a great job. <laughs> so what I can do is just clone stamp. And I want to do it at full opacity to match all layers. And first I got to get around the borders here. So I have to keep moving my selection. There we go. And the only reason this is at all difficult is because I added like a texture and an opacity and a drop shadow. So this eye isn't just one solid color pixel, even though it started as a vector that was that way. And again, GIF animations, you don't need to make it perfect. It's going to be hard to match this angle. So I'll just carry it from here. And then I got to get rid of the little halo. And this is where you get to see digital art it can be tedious work, especially when it comes to animation. And that's just because I didn't want to go back and redo all that work with the mouth and stuff that I did. All right, now I'm going to try this. I'm just going to select inside of this. Duplicate it, flip it, move it over here. You can see why it's helpful to have the highlight on a separate layer above. And now if I turn off those highlights, I should be able to erase this away. but I can clone stamp from it. Almost. Fill that in. It's not too bad. And I can clone stamp from this and fill this in. Except I gotta get it placed right. Because their lighting is not identical. So, whew, it's tricky. Tricky problem solving. So, just like I did, you're gonna make mistakes in digital art. It's about kind of understanding it. Even if you're not able to fix it, just kind of understanding how it happens, why it happens, will make you a better digital artist. There aren't mistakes, only lessons. The lessons will not end. They will continue. And now I can actually set my clone stamp to be a lot softer. And then I can soften the top of these just with my clone stamp, which is on a separate layer. So I've learned my lesson. 